Hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here. Now then, I know this one's coming out around probably 11 o'clock, probably 11.20 after a shitty upload, because apparently Wi-Fi wants to be a bitch. So yeah, if this video is up later than 11.20 on my time, or my, then that means that our Wi-Fi is probably shit. Anyways, finally got quiet around here. So, let's begin. When we last left off, we had just learned that Sergeant Taylor is alive. In fact, he's also infected. So that wouldn't make him evolved. Now then, Elizabeth Green, she has been searching for him. She knows something about a little, a little rebellion that he's been cooking up. He is actually the one who has gotten the sergeants and people to get infected. Doing so with military personnel having himself seated deep in their ranks. So, this is where Deku comes into play. During this time, let's cut to a week later, with Deku and Toga. Deku and Ochako. Still getting that mixed up. They have been able to hunt down and actually kill some of the involved that have been working with Heller. So, in doing so, Deku has unlocked a bit of creativity, or some new weapons, that he didn't think he could do, and or use. He's able to actually dual wield his weapons now. He's been getting a little more creative and coming up with ways around attacks. He's been trying to learn to fight dirty, which isn't hard whenever you have about 600 people in your head. So, with that being said, let us continue. Over this week, Deku has taken down the man with, with the supposed firearm weapon. He's taken down someone with an armored skill, and he's even upgraded his shields. Now, Ochako, she has just been working on her hunter's ability, and she actually has been able to turn and absorb enough people to give herself a third member of her pack whenever she does need them. So she'd be able just to hold out her hands and immediately just let out a fair amount. Now, this would make the pack come running straight for her anytime she would need them. So, let's continue. Deku, he would finally make contact with Elizabeth as he asked her if she can come see All for One. Because he does not believe him now. Elizabeth would finally do one thing. She would arrive in, ta in the city as Inko, as whenever she does get back to the apartment, she finds it completely destroyed. Acting surprised, she would just ask exactly what happened here. Someone would just say that the infected here got a little too close. They were actually involved in the USJ attack. Now, with that being said, that is where she would act, well, she'd actually be surprised. This version of Inko, or Elizabeth, she's been disconnected for a little too long. So she's somewhat getting a conscience. Now, she would immediately just turn herself back into Elizabeth Green as she does go to try and find Deku, or at least reach out. She would pull up her phone, calling her other self in Aldrin, asking her exactly what has been going on with Midoriya. Elizabeth would be explaining that Midoriya has been a little busy. If he, she can do her a favor, then she needs to meet with All for One. You already know the plans, so just go over it. We do need to merge again soon. Now, she would hang up the phone and text her the number. As she would go back to what she's doing. Putting her phone away, she would immediately turn her head back to the person she has pinned against the wall. Telling them that they need more information. Where is Sergeant Heller? 
they would quite simply tell Elizabeth that they don't know. As Elizabeth would just promptly snap the man's neck and absorb them. Well, absorb him. Now, she would find that he was actually telling the truth. It's a pity that. So, that is where we'll pick up with Deku and Ochako. They have somewhat been getting a little more to know each other. Talking more and I won't actually take notice of this. He wants to take her out on a date, but it just wouldn't be normal. Considering you got two high-class people considered to be the top threat in the city, since they can infect you with a virus that basically turns you into a maniac. That is what the public knows. Now, Deku and Ochako, they would do some light surveillance on the UA. They would use the reporters to get in, as you can say. They are hearing about people setting up vendors and everything for the sports festival, so Deku has a crazy idea. He would talk to one of the vendors and ask them about what they serve, or what they will be serving. They would just explain that they'll be serving all this stuff, all that stuff, and it should be fairly simple. But Deku doesn't find this interesting. He would just walk around talking with everyone as he is planting something. Anytime he gets out of view, he would just be planting his hand into the ground and sticking it back up. Going past over and over again. Now then. Let's skip to the next three days, where Elizabeth, she would meet with All for One. All for One would be talking to her, asking exactly who she is. Now, whenever she does ask this question, or he asks this question, she would have to explain exactly what's been, yeah, explain who she is and what's been happening. Telling him that they have a plan to take over the city and kill all the heroes, and that boy has a little bit of an interest in this. You see, I've been trapped on this island for two centuries, and I want to get out of it, because I've barely gotten out of that city, as you can tell. So, if we can get off the island, then I can make my way to China, where things can properly begin. Hmm. So, you want to take over the world? <laughs> well, China first, because that would at least be a good start. That, or I could go for somewhere in America. Yeah, that would work. So, you have two centuries to plan this, and you haven't even gotten that far. Well, I'm sorry. You're not the one with thousands of people screaming in your head. Yes, I've actually heard about that. Do you mind explaining that a bit better? Well, as you see, now she would immediately just transform. She transforms into a different person, saying that whenever you take on this person's appearance, you don't just do that. You can take on their memories and their entire consciousness. It's still trapped in your head. However, picture it like this. You're standing on stage and everyone is sitting in front of you. Except they're not screaming your name. They're screaming their own. Their hopes, their desires, their dreams, and every single piece of their being. It's being thrown at you all at once. You can try and drown it out, but doing so is a bit hard. Eventually, you get used to it. But... Until you do, you go a little psychotic. So, you're telling me that those two are walking time bombs. Oh no. They're not walking time bombs yet. I'm fairly certain. They won't be like that for the next, next couple years. So, what I need you to do is keep one thing hidden. And what would that be? The boy, he has a natural act for protecting people. But I need you to 
help him on one simple task. He is going to visit a friend during the sports festival. He's surveying the area now and getting his whole planned out. This whole planned out. This all planned out. Jesus. I cannot think. So, whenever he gets that all planned out, you need to just support him. He's going to ask you for portals and help with that guy. But that's not where it ends. There should be enough chaos for you to take two to three heroes. Now, with that being said, let us time skip to the sports festival. Everyone is talking and they are actually a bit scared. Thinking that this festival will be good for levity, they would throw it. Now, Bakugo, over this time, he's gotten a bit more control over One for All. Because Nanai, he was trying to give a better explanation and looking into the future and watching the fight or the next day, seeing what he did wrong, trying to circumvent that, they would have finally gotten it somewhat right after about three days. Where Night Eye, he finally at least gets Bakugo to turn down one for all. Being better. Bakugo can throw around 30% and use it fairly easily. However, that's all he can do. He's basically doing the whole brawler thing. That he did in my other what if. So. <coughs> Uh, now, with that being said, they would begin the sports festival. Bakugo being able to at least come in first with putting one for all in one of his legs. Chu just launched himself off. And using his explosives to keep the momentum. Todoroki coming in second, and I believe Ida coming in third. As you have one thing. For the cavalry battles, People are tempted to team up with Bakugo because of his second quirk, so a lot of people would just flock to him immediately. He would still pick Kirishima, however, with using one for all in his arm, and firing off an explosive in that arm with like a cannon, that's a bit more kickback. So he'd actually have Sarah on his team. Now, another thing. The battles. Eventually it would get to the point where it's down to two people. It is down to Ida, or not Ida, it is down to, let's see, yeah that works. It's down to Todoroki and Bakugo. The battle would have gone a bit more anticlimactic with Bakugo immediately throwing 30% straight at Todoroki's ice, blasting it to the side as it would have actually hit into the stands and somewhat cover a man, as people immediately go to get him medical attention. Bakugo is immediately looking at this as he's in shock, as the man would stand up, saying that he's fine, in fact he's better, as he would immediately just go to pull away his helmet and glasses, as soon as he does so, pulling off a disguise, reeling himself to be Izuku Midoriya, as someone the next row down, they would immediately jump up and begin throwing their tendrils everywhere in every single direction around them. As Yuraka begins to absorb a hundred people. Deku actually doing the same, but with just his tendrils shooting out of his torso and his arms. Now then, he would have done so as he immediately jumps down onto the stage, and you have Todoroki trying to cover him in fire. His dad told him that if he ever did run into an infected, that... Using his fire may be his only option. Todoroki using this out of pure desperation. Deku would have been coated in fire as he would have walked straight up to Todoroki. Telling him that that's not going to work. And Deku, he is actually in this armor. He doesn't cover his face anymore. He feels that there's no need to. Now, whenever he does that... This is whenever Bakugo would immediately start running forward, as he does try and throw a punch. He would have done so having Deku immediately block it, as he is actually just digging his feet into the arena, keeping himself down. 
he would have immediately just thrown his arm back towards Bakugo as Bakugo, he would have actually gotten slashed across the chest, as his shirt would rip open. While that happens, Deku, he would just bring his hand upwards, smashing it into the Alright, sorry about that cut, guys. Now, as Deku, he would have smashed his hand down into the ring. This is whenever everyone would be screaming from outside. As a car flings over the arena and smashes downward into the stands. As people are immediately confused. Deku would just look up to the stands as he would throw his hand, well, stretch his hand outwards, smashing it into the announcer's booth. As he just turns his wrist, holding it outwards. Aizawa, the Aizawa's dead, present Mike being in complete fear, he would just grab the microphone next to him and immediately just set it in his hand, as he just backs away slowly, thinking that that's what he wanted. Jakku, he would just turn his hand sideways, giving him a thumbs up as he just slowly, he retracts it. Now, he brings it up to his mouth and says one thing. There are about 20 hydras outside, all pro heroes. I suggest you go help. Otherwise, those vendors and civilians will die. Now then, as he just tosses it away, saying that that should keep them distracted. So, anyways. As Todoroki would just keep blasting Deku with fire. Deku would sigh as he would walk over and pick up Todoroki stabbing his hand into the gut and just tossing him out of the rank. Saying that that gets rid of that little distraction. Now, let's continue, Bakugo. Midoriya, this isn't you. What happens? Really? You think you really know me? That's funny. I, I've known you forever, dude. How long is forever, Bakugo? Because to me, it only seems like a couple years. Listen to me. You have a chance to get out of this alive. I can... Elizabeth will probably make sure of that. Listen to me. Back in the red zone, this happened to me one night. I woke up to it. I didn't want it. I tried to make the best of it, but... That day on the bridge... I I ran like a coward instead of trying to protect the person I loved. I nearly lost them, but look, as he immediately waves towards the stand, saying that she's back. It's amazing. First good news in my life in a while. So, before anything happens, I plan on keeping what I have. So, you're either with me or you're against me. What do you say? As Bakugo charges up one for all in his arm, saying that he's against him. Hmm, figures. Well, from what I've seen so far, you can't use that very well, so I'll give you a little... I'll give you a little easy time. As Deku, he would immediately just take off his armor as it all goes over to his right arm, as he drops it downwards, smashing it onto the ring. Basically, uh, there's no picture for this, but attributed to Deku having this type of hammer, but it's covering his entire forearm, so, hang on, like a shield? Yeah, just like a shield up to his forearm, covering his entire arm. So, like a war hammer and a shield mixed together. He would just say that this is something he's thought about. The blacklight virus, it's beautiful and mysterious, the only limit being my imagination. As he watches Deku somewhat smirk through that statement. You bastard. Now as soon as Bakugo rushes in, him and Deku would immediately collide as Deku smashes this into Bakugo's fist, sending a shockwave throughout the entire arena. While that's happening, this is whenever... <sighs> Momo, Jiro, and a lot of other students, they're trying to figure this all out. As Tetsu, Tetsu, and Kirishima immediately run into the stadium. Or, well, they jump down into the rink. Trying to help out Bakugo. 
as soon as Kirishima does go to grab Deku by the arm and actually turn and sock him in the face, Deku, he does one thing. He brings his hand upwards, immediately just smashing his knuckles into Kirishima's chin. Yes, Kirishima can harden his skin, but Deku is stronger. So, this actually did somewhat knock Kirishima away. As Tetsu Tetsu would have immediately tried rushing in, going to punch Deku in the, punch Deku in the chest. He would have done so as he punches the hole straight through Deku, as he's immediately in shock. Deku would just look down at this and say that that is not going to be it. Are you done? That, that, that should have... That shouldn't... Listen. One... One thing. Before, before, I, before I do this. Did you really think that was a good idea? I've... I've taken a spike to the head and survived. No one's told you about that? Well, I, I thought it... Dude. Okay, well. This is on you. As Deku, he, um, he turns his hand, or his left hand, into a spike, and drives it through Tetsu Tetsu's heart and steel. Tetsu Tetsu being in shock, not even thinking it was possible to pierce his skin. Deku immediately absorbing him, as the hole in his chest begins to disappear. Him and Deku getting the... Him and Bakugo getting straight back to the fight, as he charges in. Bakugo, him and Deku would just be growing, going, throwing fist, brawler to brawler, as eventually All Might would try to make a public appearance. Doing so, his suit looks a bit weird, along with his hand. All Might's wearing a glove that makes it look like he still has a finger, or at least a bionic finger, as he also does have a suit that gives him a bionic leg. Somewhat giving him, well, not increased control over one for all, but at least a bit of a boost. As Deku somewhat just looks at All Might and immediately just starts bursting out laughing. Saying that that's all he needed to see. Now, Bakugo, one more thing. What? As Bakugo would immediately turn his head, realizing he took his eyes off of Deku. Deku smashing his hand across Bakugo's face as Bakugo gets sent flying. He would immediately just whistle as Yuraka, she would walk over. She would just spray her pheromone around as Mount Lady, or not Mount Lady, Midnight's confused. This can't be good, so she immediately goes to hold her breath, thinking that this is an airborne strain. But there are hunters behind her. This is whenever Sero and some more students would try running in, as Kirishima does try and confront Deku once more. Deku just pointing over to Bakugo and just saying that his work here is done. Now, as soon as he says that, Sero and some other students, they would have um, they would have tried to stop Deku. <clears throat> as you have Soji. He would run over somewhat trying to get into a strength battle with him. But as soon as Deku, he goes to throw bring his hands up for Soji, Soji would have grabbed him by the forearms as he's holding him back. Deku just staring at Soji would have Sero wrap tape around his arm. As Kendo would come in, she would immediately bring her hands around him, completely encasing him, as they would say that they got him. Deku would somewhat smirk, saying, you do really forget who I absorbed. Well, I said creativity was my limits. As they would watch Deku's hair, turn into blades, along with Deku moving his jaw in a weird way. Deku's hair would immediately just rise up and actually start moving differently, as it immediately just throws hair follicles backwards, stabbing into Kendo's arms, as Deku throws out his tongue and immediately just slashes it across Soji's face, saying that that is not it. In fact, I've always wondered... As another pair of arms would manifest under Deku's, he would immediately just say that this is a bit weird, but shouldn't be that. I should expect this. As he makes four blades, charging in at Shoji. Shoji immediately just being in shock, as he gets butchered. Now, he 
he would turn his attention back to Kendo, as she is still on the spikes that he that he hit her with, pinned to a wall, saying that she seems to be a pretty one. Well, I can at least take you hostage and see what Elizabeth would like to do with you. Hmm. Now, you can see the fear in Kendo's eyes as Sero just try and step in. A bit weak at the knees because he's scared shitless, Deku would just throw his hand outwards, stabbing him into the wall, actually cutting open his arm, saying that if they need more hostages, he can come along. Now, as that's happening, Momo would, have, would walk in as she does try throwing a flashbang at Deku. That would work for a second, but she still has the problem where she's trying to pull out Deku's spikes from the wall. She would pull out one as Kendo is bleeding. Deku would have gotten annoyed, but before he could even do anything, Yoraka would have walked in, sealing off their only source of exit. They would just ask her, who is she? As she just says, hi everyone. No way. You're... Yeah. Shouldn't be surprised you don't know me. I'm not wearing that little blonde disguise. You... You faked being her? Is she just someone else you two killed? Actually, no. She's someone I met a long time ago. Although, being her for a while may have left me a bit weird. Being her? We take on the memories of whoever we kill. Or absorb. So, don't act surprised. As Yuraka holds up her hands, as her fingers would immediately shoot outwards. They're immediately confused because it's acting like it's acting like Aizawa's scarf, the way it moves. As she immediately wraps them up in, them, in it. Thinking they have enough hostages, Deku, he would walk over, grabbing Kirishima off the ground. As he also gets Todoroki. Todoroki has a gut wound, so uh, he will survive, at least. He didn't hit anything vital. Now, Bakugo, he would have finally been shaken awake by a hero, as they're telling him that he needs to get out of here and get to safety. He would have finally looked up as he does see Deku. Deku just smiling a grin over at him. He would have tried rushing in with, with one for all on his leg as he comes barreling forward. Going to throw a punch, this is whenever Deku, there would be a portal opening in front of him. He walks around and just looks at Bakugo. Bakugo trying to hold out his hands to stop. This is whenever... Ugh. Deku, he would, he would just throw his hand outwards, smashing it into Bakugo's nose, breaking it. As he goes to hit the ring. Now, as that happens, Deku and Yuraka walk through the portal and it closes. Bakugo screaming in anger. As all might and the rest of the heroes, they have taken down the hunters and the hydras outside. In a rather unusual method. They had to use fire, and Endeavor actually being one of the driving forces that helped take the hydras out. Now then, that is where I'm going to be leaving things off of, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.